So today we're going to work on mixing color and specifically the color we will be mixing is green and the first thing we do is prepare our paper and get that organized. Um, we have separated our sheet into multiple squares so that we have a grid of three different yellows and three different blues plus titanium white and burnt umber and this is going to give us a pretty ample space about three inches by three inches in which to mix <clears throat> some different mixtures of green as you'll have discovered on your own yellow plus blue does not always give you the green you want and um, after you've gone through this little exercise you will have a tremendous advantage um, over the subject that you will be looking at as we're working on Granny Smith apples, which are kind of a, a lovely cool green, sometimes with a bit of a blush of a warm, warmer green. And um, just by doing this little exercise for uh, 15 minutes to half an hour, you're going to come out at the other end with a, a depth of understanding of how to create the green you want. So I started with lemon yellow plus cerulean blue and I moved on to lemon yellow plus cobalt blue and I'll end up with lemon yellow plus ultramarine blue as the last of these three mixtures. These three mixtures will all have in common lemon yellow. The, the variable is the, the different blues I'm mixing in. Our next yellow is cadmium yellow and finally a very warm earthy yellow ochre. And notice in the mixtures that I'm starting with the yellow, creating a nice broad area, adding in a bit of the blue, creating a nice mix of green, darkening it with a touch of burnt umber to create a deeper, darker version of the green. And then going back in and adding a touch of white to the yellow and the green to create that lovely light green tint. And um, remnants of yellow and remnants of blue and perhaps pure white and umber will in your mixture survive um, the whole process or not. But what you want to do is experience creating this whole range of, of green from the lightest green to the darkest green that these colors will give you. And in between big color changes, what I'm doing is I'm taking my brush and I'm wiping it off on a rag so that when I go back in and pick up some fresh color, I really am not contaminating it with the color that I had before. And um, occasionally between colors, I'll actually scrub my brush in a a jar of turpentine or turpenoid or if I'm using acrylic just a bucket of water and really washing off the bristles wiping it off with my rag and then going on to pick up a fresh color and beginning anew. This exercise may seem academic but it's really fun and it really gives you an opportunity just to play Play with the brush you're using, play with the colors, notice what a range of color you get just from having these very simple combinations. And above all, notice how each combination of blue and yellow creating different greens look side by side because the temperature or the luminosity or the uh, the chroma, the color richness of any given mixture is really only readable in relation to another color. So when you are thinking, I don't know which is warmer, which is cooler, in isolation it's really hard to tell. But when you look at them side by side, you should immediately get a feeling of this is better than that for the purposes of painting a green apple. Now some of them you might say well these are all good this one I like better but that one would work and as we go along you might discover mixtures where you're like this is absolutely not working for me. Maybe a great color for some other purpose but not for telling the story of a light green apple. And um, 
the the key to kind of uh, handling color well as a painter really begins here this exercise which we're doing quite academically um, on this color grid is a way to do it but every single painting that you do is teaching you how to use color if you are noticing these subtle differences so that's part of the process it's really making yourself do something again and again and again and again differently and noticing the differences notice that the whole column on the left feels cooler than the column in the middle and ultimately the column on the far right will be much warmer and earthier say murkier or muddier um, than anything that came before it and that's because of these differences in uh, the bias each of these yellows and blues has towards either a cooler greener aspect or a warmer oranger aspect and um, you're noticing cool versus warm you're noticing the way the pigment moves you may be needing to add in a little bit of medium liquid is a good medium for oil painters um, a, an acrylic matte or glossy medium is a nice choice for acrylicists versus water um, and you, you're noticing just how your brush is working with the pigments how much of a difference it makes to wipe the brush off for color management how much of a difference it makes if you're using a, a half inch bristle brush as I am in, in this example versus say a smaller round brush which may be much more time consuming to mix up these mixtures all of these little details from the brush to the paper to whether you're vertical or horizontal to the color choices even the brands of paint are part of your learning you're really developing a relationship in each of these studies with your materials and when you show up for yourself in studio to do this kind of work whether it's a grid of color as we have here three yellows plus three blues making three different greens or if it's setting up a still life of an apple or two apples or two apples and a lemon you're giving yourself an opportunity to develop a relationship with how you experience sitting down to paint and what gets in your way or what is fun about it or things to note for the next painting I've posted a, a note in our passion of painting group on Facebook all about color bias so check there and take some time to read that um, it is one of those uh, issues of, of temperature in paint that can be a real struggle for us painters um, and also notice just what's happening with values another area that can be quite a struggle where you're working from light into dark all of these yellows are lighter than the blues and as you introduce these darker hues to these lighter hues you're getting a new color but you're also getting a new intensity of darkness and lightness and you can tell a story just by using a light to dark palette even just simply taking burnt umber and ultramarine blue and white you could do um, a lot with that to express the way light moves across a landscape the way light touches an object and um, in doing that kind of tonal work you can discover kind of a symphony of grays uh, neutralized colors at your fingertips that you may not have known you could could access a lot of my painting students have as a goal to paint looser and so one tip is use a lot more paint work more quickly do multiples it's so much fun for me to dive into a project like this because I know I have nine chances to get it right and uh, to continue to play as I'm learning which I so encourage you to do 
um, try to look at this as a really fun opportunity to just sort of get to know these pigments. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of paint. And what's really been fun for me doing these little these little color demos is just seeing that just sort of by happenstance in the midst of each three inch square all these little apples have emerged if you squint at them at the at the grid of nine you'll notice that just by doing a color story um, from light to dark you uh, might see that there it is that that sought-after apple has magically appeared so the the trick of really improving in your painting is doing a lot of painting um, changing how you're painting if you're struggling over and over and over again to get something to be more volumetric or more loose more expressive more um, accurate in terms of the color then change how you're painting change the hue you're using change the brush you're using change the speed um, with which you're working each of these little squares is approximately three minutes one and a half to two minutes on average if you have taken a bit longer and each one of them while painting it may have felt to me like oh, I'm not so sure about what I think of that but as I went along and did one after the other after the other I get a little detachment and that inner critic um, is silenced by uh, just the repetition of continuing to move on in spite of and at the end of the day uh, each of these are references for you to hold on to and use as you continue to explore telling the story of still life volume color harmonies and even landscape.